So growing room update. So this is currently what we are dealing with. As you see, a lot of these are really sagged down. They're not looking too great. And the reason being is because the aphids actually came in this year with us. And indoors, they have kind of just ravaged the plants completely. So you can see they get all over here. And then none of these guys here, so these little brown spots, they are aphids. And then none of these guys have wings, but there are actually winged aphids in here. And I did not know that was a thing until, yeah, yesterday. So really bad deal because that means they can get on the plants that I have guarded over here. But luckily I haven't seen any of those. Or I haven't seen them on those plants, I should say. And another really weird development is they actually bite. I did not know that, but I was uh, coming in here hugging them very hard with my fingers and yeah, one bit me. So not good, but we actually have a solution for this. And I'm gonna hand the camera off. That solution is in this box. So if you bring the camera over. And I'm curious how this is gonna work out. Trying to be very gentle with these. The solution is we're going to put them all in a bag. No, really. Solution is inside of the bag. This is a pretty cool looking bag. I really hope I'm not smashing anything here. I'm gonna let them go right here. Oop. Drop that. If you get a good shot there. These are ladybugs. So ladybugs are actually really quite amazing because these are actually carnivorous. Can you get a better shot up there? I mean, there is a lot of them. So there's 1,500 ladybugs just inside this bag. And ladybugs are carnivorous and they eat other bugs. So that's actually all they eat. They don't eat plants. They just eat other bugs and it's really cool. And I didn't even know this, but you can actually refrigerate your unused ladybugs, which sounds ridiculous but they can actually live in 35 degree weather by almost appearing dead and then going into a state where they pretty much just feed on their own body fat. So they are very, very interesting creatures, very beautiful. So I'm actually looking forward to this because this is pretty cool. I mean, they're probably gonna be crawling around the house and stuff, it's a little bit crazy, but we're gonna try it. They are really cool. And another kind of fascinating thing that I didn't know, and I was just kind of curious, ladybugs can actually bite humans. Now, I wouldn't personally be scared just because I've never been bit by one, and it seems like kind of a weird fear to have. But, yeah, apparently they can bite. So, which makes sense, they're carnivorous. But yeah, we'll update it, and I'm going to let all these guys go, and then we'll record, just kind of see where they're at tomorrow. It is about two minutes after I'm just kind of letting these guys disperse. They are already going at these aphids. So absolutely insane, but I think this was actually a good call because they are already eating them. So really crazy. There's a lot of them. So there's one right there doing his aphid eating thing, trying to autofocus the camera. Yeah, so pretty freaking cool. But I will go and update it tomorrow. Update. Day two with the ladybugs. So we will call this the ladybug and aphid war. So it is still raging on. 
and has just started. So absolutely astonished at how much they've done in one night. It's absolutely crazy. And it did get cold, so they did go dormant last night because it got quite cold in here. I didn't turn the heater on, and I had the door shut considering they're just kind of running rampant in here. So, yeah, they went dormant, came in this morning, it was quite cold in here, and everybody was just absolutely still. But it is kind of funny because the ladybugs are getting everywhere that they're, you know, not supposed to be. And we actually had quite a few that escaped last night. And I have to watch it because these guys also like getting on the floor. So some people may think it's absolutely crazy to let these things run around. But they are ladybugs. I, they don't really bother me at all. As um, long as they kind of keep into this room, I'm not super worried about them. But they are doing a miraculous job with these aphids. I mean, they're working mostly on the second shelf here is where... Most of them migrated, which you can see the aphid damage on a lot of these plants. I mean, they are just horribly, horribly beaten by the aphids. I mean, most of them have leaf loss, and they're just, you know, looking awful. But this is pretty impressive. So this is the plant you saw yesterday that was covered in aphids. So last night, we released all of the bugs right here. All of the ladybugs. And they immediately went through these plants and they have cleared these guys out completely of aphids. I mean, I'm very, very impressed. You can see some have migrated up there, crawling up on the ceiling because they do get everywhere. Yeah, and just be aware if you're wanting to do this in your indoor growing room, I don't have a way of enclosing them in here, but if you do, you know, that's that's probably the way to go. I just kind of let them go, and they don't bug me too much. No pun intended. But pretty cool. They, uh, they've they done a lot of work. I think given a week, I'll probably open a window and just kind of let them do their thing. And let the ones who want to go, let them go. But I would definitely say this is probably the best most effective way we've went about combating the aphids because we've done Dawn dish soap. We've, um, we've turned the plants down to absolutely nothing. So where we were like, there's no way aphids are in here. Resoiled them, done everything. All of these things just wreak havoc on the plant. And then all of a sudden you just figure out, Hey, there are more aphids, but they've done a fantastic job. And it's definitely worth, like, when spring comes and we start planting outside, I'm probably going to order a couple thousand of these because these things are super cheap. I got 1500 for 10 bucks, And, I mean, that's just on eBay, so really, really cool stuff. Um, figure releasing a couple thousand during springtime, that's going to be a pretty good deal. Some will stick around, some will leave, but hopefully enough will stick around. We don't have any issues. But with that being said, let's go ahead, let's get to circuit bending. So today we are going to be doing this. This is a cool little guitar we found. And then what's really cool about this is it's absolutely noise chaos. So a lot of things only let you do one button at a time. This thing just lets you do quite a bit. So it's really cool looking. I'm really excited to do it. And first things first, as always, let's open it up.
All right, so now that we have this open, we're looking at this and we actually have a couple different boards here. And then I can go ahead and tell you that on this board right here, there's gonna be multiple components. Even though we don't see them, the circuit traces are on this board and that's not really the dead giveaway. The dead giveaway here is that all of your wires are running into this board. It could possibly be up here, but there's only four wires running here. So more than likely the setup here is the three buttons and then one ground wire. So one of these is the ground wire that's feeding to all three of these buttons. And then these three wires are the separates. So those are the actual other side of the button. So what we're gonna be looking for here is the components on the other side of this board. So of course, how we're gonna do that is we're gonna go ahead and take this board out and see what we can find here. And there's our speed resistor, easy enough. So it's this one right here, this little black one. Now with the micro resistors, obviously I don't want to solder onto both sides of these because as you've seen in my previous videos, if you solder onto both sides of this, this resistor is most likely gonna come off the board. So you have to be very, very careful with these. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and follow the circuit traces. And this one, we're not gonna be able to trace anywhere else unless we cut into the circuit and kind of like pull this top layer off. You can see it's kind of silver underneath, but that's always not a good idea. Or I should say that's not always a good idea because if I do that, the circuit trace could actually pull up and break and then we're in even more serious trouble. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, risk the resistor here but as you see, this actually runs to the other side of this, and then it runs out in a couple different places here. So what I can go ahead and do is try to either source from this capacitor right here, or source from an even easier source all the way over here, which is a very, very sturdy solder point to go onto. So let's go ahead and see which one of these works. So now that we have the speed control placed and everything, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hot glue right here where the solder point is. And I'm gonna do this very, very carefully because as you can see, we have some buttons right here. And essentially the only button I really have to worry about is this on and off switch, which isn't a big deal because it is quite a bit far away. But just to be on the safe side so we don't have to remove any board, I'm very carefully just gonna add a tiny bit of hot glue to the end of this. And then I'm gonna kind of smear it around a bit. And then that's gonna give it a little extra security. So when that actually has any type of pressure pulled on it, that's gonna kind of allow that to have a, I guess you would say a, uh, a security so it doesn't pull out. We'll just say that.
Now that the tempo tone control is installed and everything, we are going to go ahead and add the Pro Sound and what's also going to be a sound activated LED if we can fit it in. So this is really simple to find. This is just running from the speaker, these two wires running up and we see it runs right here. So if we flip that over, that's going to be these two wires right here. So we're going to solder right onto these two points and that's going to give us our sound out. So as you can see, this LED is actually not doing anything. So the sound output LED is not going to be a thing that we can do. But what we actually can do is leech onto the board in a couple of different places. And then that will give us the LED that we're looking for with seemingly no cost to the instrument. So we can actually still do a sound activated type LED, but it's not going to be exactly sound activated. So we're going to go ahead and put this on and we're going to mount this in a unique place.
So something really odd with this is that this sits in like this. That seems to me really, really strange. And then it actually fits the other way just as well. We can put it in just like that. And then that's how we're going to do it because it does give us a little bit of extra shine. Then we're going to be mounting this LED right in here at the center of it. So we've modified this in a couple ways. Let's go ahead and put that down. We're going to hot glue here just so the wires don't short out. That looks good, and that should give us a pretty good... There you go, now we have some green in there as well. Alright.
as you can see, I have quite a bit of extra wire just kind of hanging around here. What I like to do with this is usually tape it, but before I tape it, I'm going to go ahead and do this. And then we're just going to tie it in a knot here. And that's going to kind of get rid of extra slack and it's going to make it a bit easier to control as we're closing up the case. So just right there. And then we're just going to tape it right down here so it's going to be out of the way. And the same with this. We're just going to roll it. Probably not going to tie it in a knot just because it's not long enough. We're rolling it. Now let's go ahead and tape it.